Okay, so let's let's have a class. Uh, so it's been a, a while, a little bit, because uh, there is a bomb threat. So the lab three, lab four, doesn't even do the uh, antibiotic resistant test. So we just real quick to go over something. Okay, like a review. So some of you did, I know you came here to measure it. So let's say we had a, a molar health agar. Remember, it's a molar health agar. And then we did uh, put the bacteria there, okay, like this. And then we do a uh, horizontal and the perpendicular. We put the bacteria averagely on the surface, on the agar surface. Then we use a dip stick, and we got those dips there, okay, antibiotics dips there. So let's just give you an example. It's a tetracycline, TE, which is 30. And the TE, which is tetracycline, 30 is microgram. Then what we have is that we're going to do an incubation. We incubated at 35 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. And I said we're going to look for the inhibitory zone. So what you have, more or less, you will see the inhibitory zone like that. And then you should use a ruler, which is right here, this ruler, to measure the inhibitory zone, how large it is. Now we don't use inch, we use centimeter. So that's a diameter, okay? And then I said you need to compare to the table. So. Some of them are not even on the table, but some of them are on the table, then you can look at that. For example, the tetracycline, we have a different number here, which is R, I, and S. So R means resistant, that is less than 14 millimeter. S means susceptible, which is larger than 19 millimeter. And the M is intermediate, which is 15 to 18 millimeter. Now it depends what's the large size of that one. So let's just give an example. If I'm going to measure this guy, okay, this guy somehow is about uh, um, 130 millimeter, for example. Okay, just give an example. This is 130 millimeter. Of course, that is larger than 90 millimeters, so we say this bacteria susceptible to 30 microgram tetracycline. Okay, so this is some of the review, what we did before. And you, if you haven't done that yet, you can go to Lula to do the measurement by yourself. But today we're gonna to do something new, which is the last lab. Fact sheets Corey will bring later on. The last lab we will analyze bacteria in different food products. And this is aligned with our lecture, because the lecture in the last section we'll talk about the applied microbiology. So what we're gonna to do today, uh, lab 18, Analyze of microorganism <coughs> in foods. Okay, so this means we're going to talk about the safety concern. What the safety we care about? What type of the foods we have? We have a hot dog right here. <laughs> hot dog, uh, or we call it a frankfurters. Okay, what is the major concern for this bacteria, for the pathogen, which is Listeria monocytogenes? L mono. Because this is related to the outbreaks. And the hot dogs is also a curing product, so you should know that. Because you have a sodium nitride there. 
So that's why you see the color, it is a little bit brownish. Now, in order to prevent or inhibit the stereomonosotogenous growth, hot dogs more or less have some of the antimicrobials. So when you look at here, look at the ingredients, you will see potassium lactate, sodium diacetate. You see potassium <laughs> lactate <coughs> and sodium diacetate. This is antimicrobials to control passenger. But I'll tell you one thing, what they do, they only is inhibit, which means it's a static function. Okay, it's not really killing the bacteria. So we're gonna directly jump into how we gonna analyze the hot dogs, the bacteria population on the hot dogs. So how are we going to do that? We'll get a few turns sample back, like this. OK? Of course, I should wear gloves, but I just skip that because I have to write on the blackboard. And then we have to tear this off. Um, what we will do is uh, one hot dog for one two students shared for one bag. It's very difficult to open. Okay, so you should wear gloves. This is a sample bag. You tear it off and you will see there is a filter there, which means you put a hot dog, you shake it, there is going to be the filter side and now filter the side and now filter the side is for those hot dog and the filter side is for the liquid. So it's very easy to he help you to absorb the solution. Especially when we move on to the ground beef, it's difficult to do. So the different analysis, analysis right here. So let's just put one hot dog in. Okay, I'm, I don't have a glove, so I'll try my best to so put one hot dog. Once we put a hot dog there, what we need to do? We need to put a solution. So what are the solution? We're using 0.1% nutrient gross. Now, of course, this cylinder has been um, autoclaved, so we're going to do 100, 100 ml. So you just measure 100 microliter. Sorry, milliliter. Okay. So then we're going to add in there. Okay, what are we going to do? You're going to have to roll one time, roll a second time, have here, like this. This gives you generate a space and a air gap, we say a bag, you could shake. And uh, based on United States Department of Agriculture Food Safety Inspection Service, this is a vigorous shake. 30 seconds, like 30 Mississippi, like this. Okay? Because the bacteria will be detached on the hot dog surface. So that's a hot dog, how we're gonna do it. So how we do it? We're gonna put one hot dog in here. And then we're gonna add the water, is 100, ML, 0.1%, neutron gross, and we will do shake, 30 seconds. Of course, you have to do a rolling first, okay? Now, the question remaining is, how many bacteria will be on the surface? We tell you about something already, these type of the hot dogs, the surface, <coughs> usually 50 square centimeter. So how are we going to do the calculation later on? Is the colony CFU on other plates, multiple by dilution factor, multiple by 100 ml of neutron broth, 
and divided by 50 square centimeter. So this gives you conclusion, which is CFU per square centimeter. Now, of course, later on, you can transfer them to the log. OK, so that is a hot dog, how we do it. The second one, what we're going to do is ground the beef. So ground the beef, everybody knows, looks like this. It's a ground beef. Um, a hundred percent pure beef, no additives, <laughs> looks like it is a um, organic, kind of organic, not really. Seventy three percent lean and twenty seven percent fat. This is actually a high fat product, so really high. Hot dog is also a high fat product, so those are not safe, and also it's a high salt product. The reason why it will be glued together because when you do the emulsification and the further you do a cooking, they will be attach each other because the salt is denaturing of the protein. But that's another story. That's a food processing. So, so the ground beef right like here. How are we gonna do it? We will do this a little bit different. So again, the same thing. We will be. Ideally, you have to measure 25 grams of the uh, grounded beef. So we don't have it, so I'm just approximately give you some. Okay? Give you some ground beef like this. So what we're going to do, again, we need to add a bacteria solution, 0.1% nutrient broth right here. And we add into uh, autoclave the cylinder, 100 milliliter, same thing. So we're going to add in here. And at this moment, this filtration bag is important. Because you will see after that, it looks like one side is completely screwed up, and the other side you have a liquid. Now, do we think we do like this is enough? No, it's not enough because you just be gently pumped a little bit. So what we should do. Do you think we can shake? No, we cannot do the shake. So what we have to do, there is a very magic stuff somewhere in the corner of the bench and nobody noticed it. But it's been there stay for many years, just using for stomach. That's what it is. <laughs> really quick, about like 30 seconds, you can get it done. And then you see it's all homogenized. We call it a homogenization. Okay? That's a really good practice for you. <laughs> and then you will see it's very hard to absorb the liquid. There is no way to do. How are you going to do it? Therefore, this future bag is important. You screw it like this. This is meat, homogenized. This left side, very red. That is actually the solution you should take it. And very good because the red color, there is a myoglobin and also a little bit of the blood there still. And this is a good new nutrients for bacteria to grow. So this is second one, which is for the ground beef. Now, which pathogen is important for the ground beef? Is the one we have been mentioned all the time is E. coli, O157H7. That says requires zero tolerance for ground beef, and not only ground beef, any of those nine types of beef, the E. coli 157H7 is zero tolerance. So how we do it here? We just review it. We put approximately 25 gram ground beef, and we add 100 ml nutrient broth, which of course is 0.1%, and we do the homogenize 
or we say stomach for 30 seconds. And the sample has to be taken from the future the side. Okay, the future the side. Now, how we do the calculation of the final bacteria? This will be the CFU <coughs> multiplied by dilution factor. And then, because we have a 25 gram and also 100 ml here, so we think they are the whole thing. So we're going to add up them together. At this moment, we think gram is equal ml. And then we have to divide it by 25. Because those bacteria all come in that from 25 grams of ground beef. So this gives you CFU multiple by DF multiple by actually 5. That gives you CFU per gram. So the ground beef is a little bit different than the CFU per gram. OK, now the next one, what we have is a tomato. This is a very small. A uh, sweet, a uh, tiny sweet uh, baby tomato. Well, it's too small. Like this. Now, tomato, what we care about it is salmonella. Now, let's just use this as a model. <coughs> but we really care about salmonella. Now, where is the most uh, productive places in the United States for the tomato is Florida because it's very hot okay and they have a uh, big components of the lycopene that's why it looks like red so once it's purified uh, uh, when it's grown up uh, we will see the tomato looks like it's red if it's fresh young it's still like green sometimes but there are some of tough commodity of the tomato it's it's a green type okay so what we're going to do, we need to analyze the bacteria, but I want to tell you one thing, the key thing here is this thin scar area. This thin scar area usually is uh, hybrids or like lots of bacteria stay there. So that area, we call it a stem scar, that's usually hiding lots of bacteria. So how are we going to do? We will do a little bit difference, but basically they are the same. So we put another filter bag. So we put a tomato inside. Like this tomato, I will say you could do even 50 ml. Let's still do 100. Let's just keep it the same. So we are 100 microliter. And then we dump it in there. So how we should do it? Tomatoes, there is a standard from the, uh, actually from the FDA, there's an analysis message. We need a shake, 30 seconds. Then we need to do this, we call it a massage. So we're gonna do massage on the tomato surface for 30 seconds. Don't break it. And then we're going to shake it again for 30 seconds. Then we try to detach bacteria on the tomato surface. Okay, so that's our steps. How we do it? It's a baby tomato, so we add a hundred microliter. We're gonna have to shake. Thirty seconds. We do massage. Thirty seconds, and finally we're gonna shake again for thirty seconds. Okay, so what's going to be the calculation of the bacteria? That will be CFU multiplied by dilution factor. Uh, we think about this is the whole thing. So we do dilution factor. We also multiply by 100. This becomes CFU per tomato. Okay, we just make your life easy. We say it's a CFU per tomato. How many on the tomato surfaces? That's a calculation method. Okay, the last one will be a chicken carcass.
So what's the chicken pathogen we care about? Is salmonella and capillobacter. And we talk about this too in the class. We will have a special section on Thursday. We talk about uh, um, these two passages on the processing of the poultry products. What we have so far, we had a very traditional fresh young chicken like this. Huge. And we also have some hams like Tyson. It's a tiny one. I never do that. Look at this a tiny one. Cornish ham. So Amy says you may need to try the ham. I think she is sorted yet. So we'll just wait a little bit. If you're interested, you can try the ham to see how many bacteria on the surface. So this is very large, is that right? How are we gonna do it? We need a special uh, sample bag, like this. Very large, poultry sample bag. Huge. Same thing, you tear from it. Okay, now what we do? This is really huge. So I need Corey for help to demonstrate this. So you're gonna dig a hole right here. We did this, these are lots in the lab. Yes, maybe we have to do this with the sink. So good idea. let's do this in the sink. Okay, so open it. Very gentle, very gentle to tear it off. Okay, now. We don't need a bunch of these inside stuff. Okay, you see inside there is a, I don't know where they have it. Okay, this one is not have, okay, and that's good. So we very gentle, very gentle to take it off. Okay, take it off. What do you think of that big junk stuff? You need to put a bacteria, uh, bacteria uh, neutralization solution. So what we do, nutrient brush. This time 100 microliter is not enough. So we're gonna do, let's just do 200. The research showing you have to do 400 or 200, but basically, they are the same thing. Okay, so we add 200. Now after you do 200, what you're gonna do? You have to do vigorously shake for 30 seconds like this. Now, very important is, this is really nice. See these layers, drumsticks? Sometimes these wings are really sharp. It's gonna broken. So in the lab, we always do double bag. And we really have these kind of red solutions that's really nice because it's from the chicken carcass itself. It's a blood. So it's like a blood solution. So we're gonna have to do this. Shake. Okay, then we took the bacteria sample from here. So that's a poultry sample. Analyze, the way you finish the analyze today, we have some extra poultry sample. You could take it out and take it to the home. So how we do, do, do this guy? This guy, what we're going to do is we're going to use a poultry sample bag for the birds there. A bird is there, we add 200 ml, 0.1% nutrient gross. Okay, how are we testing bacteria? Shake, 30 seconds. And the final calculation is CFU multiplied by dilution factor. And uh, we just say this is will be divided by 200. We will say it is uh, uh, per rings, or I N S C per rings nate. Okay. Divided by 200 ml. Yeah, that, that's the poor rinse nate, rinse nate, nates. Uh, sorry, this is actually, we don't need that. Because uh, this is coming from 1 ml, so this poultry bag, not really 200, it will just be like this. And finally, it will be just a per ml. Okay, the per rinse nate. Okay, I want you guys to do the work right now. You can pick any of these from here. 
two of you will share the same sample and you can do a preparation by yourself to the front desk. Once you have all these samples, you're gonna get three other plates. Everybody do it individually for the spread plating. Of course, you need to do the dilution. What's the dilution factor we're gonna use? The dilution factor will be Ten to the one, ten to the three, and ten to the six. Yeah, ten to the one, ten to the three. Actually, uh, uh, let's do ten to the five. How do we do it then? What is ten to the one? Zero point one ml from original bag. Is that correct? What is 10 to the 3? We need one tube, which is the original bag go 9.9 .9 ml. Then we add in 0 0.1 ml onto the other place. We did so many things, so you need to familiar with that. How to do 10 to the 5th? You need two 9.9. .9. So CLE dilution from first one, go second one, then go to 0 0.1 ml, go to the final one, okay? Don't forget labor. It's very important, but we're gonna talk about the calculation on Thursday. Now this Thursday will be our last lab section. We'll do the review for the final exam. And the final exam will be come back from the Thanksgiving holiday on Thursday. So that's give you some extra day to review. Okay, so go ahead to do it. It's a big lab. You pick whatever is the products you like.